Last episode we took our first steps into March Ridge with the goal of gaining access to the military apartments and it's safe to say it didn't go well. This episode we're heading back to March Ridge and the episode won't end until I finally step foot in the apartments or I quit the game. Welcome to episode 8 of Rosewood Takeover. So last episode I left you bitten and was running down the street with no clothes on and you all know how that ended. As I showed you in the last episode, we now have four phases of this series to complete, and as I mentioned in the intro, today we will complete phase one, to a certain extent. To do that, I need to head back to March Ridge, but before we do anything, let's have a look at the new perks I've decided to run. I have based this off some of your feedback, and to be honest, everybody has different opinions, but this is what felt right. Occupation-wise, we're running as a police officer. The little boost to the nimble will be a treat as we get towards our end game. For the negative traits, we're rocking high first, slow healer, underweight, conspicuous, prone to illness, smoker, unlucky, weak stomach, and slow reader. For the positives, dexterous, outdoor man, fit, organized, handy, and strong. Again, there's probably something you don't agree with me on, but let's give it a go. I respond on day 103 to the rear of the fire station, and in the pitch black, I shot back to base to get geared up. Once I was geared up, I grabbed some sleeping tablets to get myself back to sleep and get my sleeping schedule back in line, ready to prepare for my journey back to March Ridge tomorrow. So now is probably a good time to talk about how we plan to take on this mammoth task. And yes, before you say it, I know it's not for you guys, but for me, it was a real eye-opener. While we're on with eye-openers, the last episode, although I thought it was shocking, pulled in over 10,000 views in the first couple of days. And we're now close to that 1,000 subscriber mark. 88% of you watching are not subscribed i do thank you all for taking the time to watch the video but if you are already and you enjoy the content the subscription really does help anyway where were we today's plan for march ridge so a few of you have put your thoughts in the comments section on the last episode and i have a plan i want to run or should i say trial as we have pretty much cleared the right side of the map in the last episode and now's the time to get loud i aim to park the car around the usual area to the south work my way back to the east to this particular fenced off area and lure as many zeds as possible with a shotgun once we're out of ammo I'll then turn my attention to the molotov cocktail and hopefully set as many on fire as possible giving me a clean sweep to the military apartments seems a pretty robust plan but as we know things don't always go our way so on day 104 i spent the day preparing myself to take on my biggest challenge yet it's going to be like taking on the fire station in episode 2 but on a bigger scale and throwing some new mechanics the first thing i did was read the journal to bring back all the lost xp in my last life now with my new skills and build i feel like i'm well equipped to take on the challenge i created four more Molotov cocktails, the key to clearing out as many Zeds as possible in the next couple of days. Then sawed off the end of my double barreled shotgun. I don't know how the sawn off works against the normal long barrel, but here's to the fun of it and the unknown. I collected around 150 shells, grabbed some basic supplies, filled up the green van as the fire trucks were a little banged up, and spent the rest of the day walking around the kitchen trying to get that level 4 in nimble. I know you guys hate watching this stuff, so let's move on. Before bed, I decided to saw off the end of the JS2000. With the increased ammo capacity, it's probably the better choice but let me know in the comments below. Once it got late, I headed to bed, ready to start the chaos on day 105. On day 105, we got straight to it at 5am with our plan ready to execute. And let's say, as always, it never goes to plan. You see, I jumped in the brown truck and hit the road, taking the same route as I always do to get to March Ridge. This time, though, without the Sunday driver trait, the truck was much faster. I clipped a few of the Zeds on the way out towards the gas station, but nothing that would have really hindered our progress. Not till we came to the straight road to March Ridge anyway. I took the corner way too wide and I saw a small tree that I went directly into. Now with a scratch that was bleeding and a car that was on the edge, I needed to be safe all the way. As I also forgot bandages for the first time, I had to pull over and rip up my socks to stop the bleeding. Then when I was back on the road, the car decided to cut out and somehow I managed to take it straight into another tree. After jumping out to take care of a few lurking zeds, I hopped back in the van to get it started and get back on the road. Safe to say we were about 40% of the way to March Ridge and the car was knackered. I made the executive decision to move forwards and as I was close to the intersection, I could look for another car to hotwire and push my plans back a day or two. After checking over to the east and clearing about 30 zeds, I found nothing. I then headed over to the east where I found this car sat by the food market, but quite like my car, it was knackered. At this point, it was walk there or walk home, and as usual, I decided to head forwards. I walked for ages down the side of the road, killing off the trailing zeds as much as I could until I hit the drowsy stage around 6pm. At this point, I felt like I was just about in line with the edge of March Ridge, and with sleep needed, I headed into the trees. Just the one zed all the way, and as I knew I was close, but tired and exhausted, I had to take the risk on some sleep. 
I hopped in a tree and went for it, waking back up on day 106 at 5am. I decided that as it was pitch black, I took more sleeping tablets and slept in the tree till 12pm. And obviously when I woke up, it was foggy. I used the trusty walk too so I could traverse the trees, and as I got closer to the town, the Zed started to appear. Then as I spotted the main road and became drowsy again, I headed towards the houses. There were about five to kill outside. And then another two. but we managed to get access to one of the properties and could finally breathe. I spent the remainder of the day listening to the Zeds moaning the properties around me, just trying to tire myself out ready to move on with the original plan again tomorrow. The only issue I have now is that I need to get to the other side of town. The plan on day 7 was to swoop from the north side of town down to the south side and back to the original March Ridge safe house. This will then set us up to take on the master plan that is already two days behind. Initially I thought I may be able to check a car around the area and drive over but this was quickly shut down with a small group of Zeds hanging out the rear door. I decided to walk my way there just luring the zombies as I went, straight around the neighbourhood, then over the field and over the back fence to my destination. I was expecting a nightmare but I kept it simple, just jogging around the groups, then walking, then jogging. I made it to the field and from here it was plain sailing straight to the rear fence of the safe house and over we went. I killed the one remaining Zed, then spent the bulk of the day training some more nimble in the bedroom, and now after three days, we're finally in a position to get to work. On day 108, we woke up around 5am and began opening our food, ready for the day ahead. At 6am, we set off on our way to the planned shooting spot, and once I was in position, we finally let off the first shot. I mean, they came in dribs and drabs. It was pretty tame, if anything. We picked the majority off with the axe. I was expecting the type of gunplay I found at the fire station in episode 2. Obviously, this was a bigger area, and the noise was nowhere near close enough to pull them all in. I decided to head closer to the main entrance of March Ridge. I used the road as my track and began working backwards and forwards, unloading shots with a shotgun. It was a lot better than the first spot, but I still used way too many slugs and didn't get enough kills. The crowds were bigger, but still not big enough to warrant me pulling out the Molotov. I did, however, realise that if you stood in one spot to shoot, the green outline is much easier to get instead of on the move. Just another feather in my cap learning this game. I had to stop off at a house to fill up the water bottles, then I decided to head closer into the military apartments and let off more shots. I was on the edge of the apartments, the closest I'd ever been, and the crowd was coming from all directions. I managed to get in front of them and pull them further south, my only issue was how spread out they were, but I decided to pull out one of the Molotovs and let it fly. I nearly ran straight into the horn but managed a lucky escape and when I finally calmed myself to look back at them it felt good to see the flesh burning. My only issue was that the horde had spread so much with me running through the trees that it was hard to bring them all back together. Clumps had broken off without a touch of fire so I tried and tried and tried to bring them as close as I could but with no luck. I was shattered at around 7.30 and decided to call it a night. After a sharp sprint through a house and out the back window I made it a few houses down and headed inside. After composing myself I checked the kill count and it was 275. Not a bad start but there's still a lot more work to be done. I went straight back to it on day 109 with more confidence flowing it was time for a different approach. I managed to find myself a van with a little bit of fuel in the residential area so I decided to floor it straight to the military apartments and gather up as many Zeds as possible. I used the trusty horn just running around and around in circles to gather up as many Zeds even with a couple of close shaves and getting caught on the rough terrain when trying to group them together. It took a few attempts to get them as close together as possible but once we hit the straight road out of town it was time for molotov number two i pulled the van further up the street hopped out of the van and threw it at this point i completely forgot i only had 18 percent fuel in the truck but continued on using it to try and keep them moving there was this close shave where i thought i was doomed but we managed to pull ourselves out of it and get ourselves back on the road the road of burning zombies looked great until my fuel ran out so we were back on foot the plan was to keep the group as close together as possible and make my way towards the military apartments to kill off whatever remained outside. It took a little longer than expected as I needed to keep the group close and burning, but slowly we worked our way back down the road, adding more and more Zeds to the group. As I made it to the car park, I let off more shots that would hopefully lure out as many as possible from inside, and still with my fire crew in tow, we just continued working our way around in circles to maximise the fire. I ventured around to the east of the station just to see if there were any more that I could pick up, then made my way around the front of the car park and used this little circle to keep walking around 
and luring more out. The group was only small, but it was enough to keep adding the occasional Z that popped out from the inside the building. I shot a couple of the windows out, which helped bring out a few more, but then the tiredness began to hit and it was time to make a move. I kept a couple of the Zs burning back into the residential area. Obviously, with my confidence being high, I got carried away and wanted to burn down a house. After checking numerous doors, I finally found one that was open, but before I got a chance to hop in, the usual lapsing concentration kicked in and I was chomped. Luckily this time it was just a laceration to the hand, so after bandaging up, I ran through the house and began the arson attack on March Ridge. I decided to head back south for somewhere to bunk down, but as I came across two police cars, I looted them to find an MRS 788 rifle and a box of ammo. I also found another 12 shotgun rounds in the boot of the second one, but I had to spend 20 minutes killing a Z before I could loot them. We finally made it back to a safe space around 10pm, and after we sorted out the Moodles, we headed to bed ready for day 110. With my now lacerated hand, making my move into the military apartments wouldn't be a good one. Today's plan was to lay low as much as possible, but make my way as close as I could so that when I was ready, I could be close by. As the hand axe was on its last legs, I needed to head back over to the base and grab my trusty crowbar. I had a quick wash as it's been a long week, then began to search for my new vehicle. It's something I probably want to do before heading into the apartments anyway, as having no way home would be a big problem. No luck though, so it was time to move on. I had a couple of Zs lurking around and you can really see how slow the attack speed is at the moment. I don't know how many are left in the apartment, so I need to be 100%. Another three cars, but no luck on the fuel front. More Zeds dead to the crowbar, and another couple of cars with no fuel. My fire, however, is still going on, so the laceration was well worth it. I've not really set anything on fire yet, so this was fun to see. We made another three Zeds in the street, and as it was pressing on late afternoon, I decided this would be the closest spot for me to sit tight till I'm 100%. There were some crowd control to take care of, for some reason there were about six of them just sitting in the house next door. Nothing was too much of a worry though as I played it safe, then got to work looting. I did find myself a nice little pistol, an additional gun to take into the apartments with me, and I finally found myself some painkillers to relieve the stress of my laceration. I did get a nice amount of ammo from the three houses I looted, but with the weight being an issue, I dropped a little loot pile in the road to collect on the way home. I decided to check out the little shed at the rear before bed, and my god did we hit the jackpot. A full gas can of fuel setting us up nicely for our escape from March Ridge. I put it into my backpack, then headed back inside and headed up to bed, ready for day 111. On day 111, it was time to find ourselves a car. We needed a planned escape route once we get access to the apartments, and a step van would be the ideal candidate. We decided to go a little further towards the apartments and check around the cinema. Why I didn't jump over the fence, I don't know. I suspect I was just been on the safe side with it being as close to the apartments as it was. I spent some time checking over the car park, and luckily we found ourselves a step van. Not in the greatest condition but it was good enough to get us back to Rosewood when we require it. I filled it up with the gas that we found in the shed last night, then got to work on the hot wiring. Once the van was up and running, it was time to do another sweep of the apartments. I parked up near the side door and proceeded to check around the front, finding just the one lonely Zed stood outside. I had a look through a couple of the windows to see if there were any Zeds I could lure out, and as I headed to the north side, that's when I found a small group of five. I picked them off one at a time, then proceeded to head along the side of the building, where we found another couple of Zeds just grouped together in the alcove. Again, no match for me with my swing speed back to normal. I spotted a Z in the distance that seemed to be holding a shotgun. My thought went straight to the shotgun shells, which would have been fantastic. That was until I saw the katana. There it is, our first katana in the game. A small victory, probably a weapon I'll never use because my skill is so low. I cleared a few around the rear, again nothing to worry about, then decided to head over and check out the cinema, as it was something that had interested me when I opened the map for the first time. Can you actually watch movies in here? Anyway, to cut a long story short, the place had obviously been a victim to my fire a few days ago. There was next to nothing inside, although I did take a trip out onto the roof, which was nice. It's just a shame about the fog. As it was still early enough in the day, that's when I decided. I'm going to take my first steps into the apartment block. I've been working up to this for two episodes, and as I said in the intro, this episode won't end until I take a first step into the apartments or quit the game. And just like that... We were in.